Kilda. You may remember me. I was a pro rugby player for 16 years and played 71 tests for the All Blacks. I love rugby, but at the heart of it, I'm just a Māori boy who loves Aotearoa and the outdoors. Woo! Good playing here. Yeah. I could catch that one. We're sport for choice, really. <laughs> Diving, hunting, fishing, and foraging about the place. Oh, it's me. Yeah, Look at the size of it. In this series, I'll take you on the road as we meet hearty local characters, <laughs> create some history for my mokopono to inherit. Will guide me through what they do best in some of the most beautiful parts of Aotearoa. You already exceeded my expectations. <laughs> this is Pity Sticky Tour. Throughout this series, I've been to some of the most beautiful locations in Aotearoa. On the land. Get in there, buddy. Putting their pig on the back. It's pretty heavy. And sea. The water's pretty clear there, cousin. It's just like a small cast. moana. Each week, I've been lucky enough to experience and share some of the kai gathering activities this country has to offer. And tonight, it's the Pity's Tiki Tour season finale. I'm in Tokomaru Bay on the North Island's east coast, near Gisborne. With the help of Colin Scudder, I'll be jigging for kingfish. Oh, Jesus! Hold up, lift, up. <laughs> lift up and wind down, bro. Lift up. We're up in the back country on the hunt for venison. Hope you can shoot like you pass a rugby ball, bro, and we'll be good. <laughs> and I try my hand at calf marking. <laughs> Calm down, bae. Te whakahaere ana a Colin Scudder i tētahi pāmu kou, hippi hoki, whāmano heketa te rahi ki tokomaru. And he's going to be my guide for the next couple of days. Kia ora, Chris. Kia ora, bro. How's things? Good, good. Where are we, bro? We're in Takamaru Bay. At the moment, you're on Model Titi Farm Partnership. I'm the farm manager on here. Kāpai. What's our uh, plan of attack for the next couple of days? Well, hopefully do a bit of fishing, deer stalking and calf marking. Calf marking, they're going to be tough. You're going to get bruised. Oh. <laughs> Where's the safety in that? <laughs> <laughs> this is just how it is. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. What fish are we going to chase? Try and chase. Kingies, hopefully, bro. All else fails, we just tariki and snapper. Oh, that's still good, though. Yeah. yeah. Can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> First up, Colin wants me to help out with the few jobs that he needs doing around the place. And I think he's got a few surprises in store. My bro, these are the fellows doing a calf marking. Uh, he chip it around a Morris. Kia ora. And Stuart Leach. What's your plan of attack there, brothers? Oh, well, bro, we're just going to be um, marking these calves today and putting rings around their nuts. Reckon so, I'll be getting kicked? Most likely, bro. For audio, might mm -hmm. get stuck into it. Into it, bro. you got to mark your calves because that's your identity for each station. In case your calf gets onto the next station, they'll see your mark, so they know to bring it back. Then you put tags in them. They can scan them at the works. So right is for the males and left for females. <laughs> Calm down. It was pretty tough at the start, not knowing what to do and how hard to sort of clip the ears and how hard to squeeze to put the tags in. But I guess once I sort of got a hold of it and figured it out myself, it wasn't too bad, actually. Calm down, mate. Guess the hardest part was putting the ring around the uh, bull's uh, balls. These fellas have to be castrated to make them easier to handle and their meat much tastier. So when you grip it, kill. Put it under like that and then pull it through. Yeah, and sort of give it a jolt and close. And then the nuts will probably be in. So if I was to... <laughs> the bulls, we take their nuts off, turn them into steers. That's better grading for when you kill them. And then sort of push it up, and they should just pop through. Mm. I think this one's only got one. Mm. Oh, there's the other one. Got the other one? Ah. Got him. Yep. Really? Well, that was easy. But this guy's heaps bigger. <laughs> What's he even doing in here? There's actually one that was a lot bigger than the rest of them. <laughs> I don't know, we're about to get kicked, maybe. 
I think someone's trying to stitch me up here. And then it's like a side, you come where I am, and I'll, I'll lean up against it. Like... I was actually trying to do it so you can do it, Cass. <laughs> so so if anyone gets the boot, it's you. Is there something That's balls? might be too big. Uh, might be. Uh, 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 squeeze it down, bro, so he dropped you. <laughs> I think I'll stitch up a bit there. I think they stitched me up. It's just a bit hard to sort of put the ring around the balls. Oh, this is pretty tough. And uh, <laughs> they were telling me to try and squeeze it in there, and I was just telling them it's too big. Oh, Jesus. Bro, it's too big, bro. Honestly, can't hardly get it through. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So they said, oh, they'll just cut it later. So they reckon, but yeah. <laughs> After that debacle, they put me back on tagging. Well, lucky last one then, cuz. Oh, bit of a fight, D. Well, that was a bit of a workup. How long have you been farming for, Cus? Oh, I've been farming for about five years now, man. Just been predominantly doing beef? Yeah, sheep and beef. Sheep and beef. Yeah, man. What about you, Cus? Oh, I've been working with Cole at this farm for about three, four years. Yeah. Just whatever he wants me to do. Oh, you're going to work, your, work on your guns for the summer? Try to, try to. <laughs> Coming up, deep sea fishing is a lot tougher than I expected. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> With just a few hundred residents, the small town of Tokomori Bay on the North Island's east coast survives mostly on forestry and farming. Hey, we are not the Rania or the Kaimoana Kei Tene Takutai, Fitu Kiromita Teroa. I'm looking forward to this trip out on the water with Colin and the chance to battle with my first kingfish. Kingfish are one of the hardest fighting fish in our waters, so catching one is a real test of strength. They've got to be longer than 75 centimetres to keep, and you find them around undersea structures where they feed on smaller fish, sheltering from the currents. The thing is a deep sea fish, so we've got to get right out there. We're going to head out to about 15k. The rock lifts up from 60 metres to about 52 metres, and that's normally where the kingies sit on that high pinnacle. We should get some good kingies on it. We're jigging. It's basically winding in your line as fast as you can while lifting your rod up and down and the shiny metal lure hopefully attracts the kingfish. But it's bloody hard. Jigging is quite physical, <laughs> so we're gonna get a little bit tight. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be sweating. Yes, here, swap. Oh, no, it got off. Oh, no, no, here, swap you. Oh. You got one? Oh, I had one. Oh, I had one, tricky. Oh, I hate guys. E ai kea Colin, ko mau i aia tētahi iko. So he hands it off to me to finish the job. Come here, you scallywag. What we got there, cousin? Just a rubbish barracuda, bro. Just gotta watch out for their teeth. See, check those teeth out. Hey. Well, barracudas wasn't our target species, but at least there's a bit of a fish around. Good crate bait, though. Oh, oh. Go on. No, keep going, mate. Keep going. You've got off. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah, lock them on. <laughs> it's much tougher than I thought, this deep sea fishing. I'm used to staying in much closer to shore, where everything's a bit smaller. Yeah, I've never been that far out. <laughs> so it was a bit foreign to me. Bring in, mate. No, another barracuda. I think we're going to have to change posies. The first two fish we caught were barracuda. They're just like scavengers of the sea. They're a waste of time. I'll release it, eh? These things feed on just pretty much everything that's under the water. Everything. Yeah, the uh, jigging process is uh, 
quite awkward, actually. <laughs> As you can see, I'm an amateur. This is my first time jigging for uh, Kingies. And uh, we've come up trumps with Barracuda, not Kingies. Try that, bro. Let's <laughs> have another little hoot or two with uh, this one cousin. Never know, never know. See if we can catch something other than Barracuda. One last jigging session on a new spot and I put all my effort in. It's messy to watch, but I quickly get our bite. You got one, you got one. I'm locked onto something, but it only feels as strong as the last Barracuda. Oh yeah, got a kingy bone! Oh, he's oh, been bitten. bitten. Uh, shark must have bitten hey. Bring him in, bro, bring him in. Oh. If you look closely at this footage, you can see the shark that took the tail off my kingy before I could reel it aboard. He's stuffed. I'm a little disappointed, but a kingy's still a kingy, especially when it's your first. Although this guy's really messing up the boat. Our uh, shark's just grabbed it on the way up. As he was winding it up, he's just taking the back half off. But that's our target species. Woo! Like you had a hotel to my house. Lucky, mate. This will be good eating anyway. Spurred on by my catch, Colin gets his line back down to see if we can do better. Oh, here, mate. Here, mate. Here, pretty old, this one. Yeah, it's a bit of kingy. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Lift up and wind down, bro. Lift up, drop it down. Yep. The pull on the line is so strong, like nothing I've up ever felt before. Up and down, bro. I'm running out of juice, and this kingy is putting <laughs> up a good fight. At least I hope it's a kingy and not that shark. Still got a bit of fight, eh? <laughs> the forearms were Looks burning. Like I think a few times I was trying to ask if I could have a sub or a bit of time out. Can I get a sub? No. <laughs> I was getting yelled at to hurry up and wind it in. Keep going, bro. Here it comes. Look at that, bro. Yeah, bro. Good kinging. Woo! Woo! Good kinging, bro. When you hooked it up, it was awesome to have that feeling of uh, landing it and putting it in the uh, chili bin. Cheers, yeah, cuz. Lucky we came to the next spot, cuz. Too much, bro. Oh, it's a good size of kingy. How big you reckon it is, my cuz? Uh, it's probably, we'll say 18 kgs. He reckons 18, but I think he's just trying to be nice. So I could say that on the camera. Doesn't bother me. Landed my first kingy, and that's the main thing. It was a mean fight. <laughs> it's us, bro. Mean. Shot, cuz. Go home now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> E hariko ana a hau ki te hoki ki te whenua, ahakoa ko pau te hau e hikaka ana ki a ki te he aha atu kei tēnei whenua a tāhua o tokomaru. How was that experience, bro? Because <laughs> That was pretty hard, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think I felt a bit awkward with the old uh, jigging, but uh, pulling in that kingi, bro. The second one, anyway. How was the forearms? Yeah, no, nah, they're pretty dirty. <laughs> I was trying to have a bit of a, a, bit of a rest there, and the kingi wouldn't let me have a rest, so... What are you going to do with that uh, king? Go to Tupuka pub and then you can cook it up. Don't think I've ever cooked one, <laughs> but uh, I'll come up with something. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Got a bro. bit of time to do it before yeah. the hakari, so we'll figure that one out. Now you'll be sweet. Coming up, a hunt for venison in the back country. How far is the shot? Oh, 300. <laughs> <laughs> visiting Tokomaru Bay near Gisborne, and I've headed inland to stalk some deer. We're at Fernside Station, an organic beef and sheep farm in the foothills of the Rokumara Ranges. All right, she was an early start, 5 a.m., waking up and uh, meeting uh, Joey and Chase up at their farm at uh, 5.30. These are our boys going to take us out today. Joey Sheridan. That's a bird. Get up. Get and, up. His, and his young fella, Chase. Get up. Get up. We're just gonna head out the back. Should be a few deer around, and we'll just pick out a nice big fat greasy one for the fry pan and throw it on this young fella's back. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you can shoot like you pass a rugby ball, bro, and we'll be good. <laughs> We're heading deep into Ngati Poro country, and the views are stunning this early in the day. 
The mist is lifting, so we could be in for a scorcher. As we head up to the top end of the farm, Chase has shot ahead for a quick recce to see what's around and which way we should go. Any news, bro? Yeah, there's one hind in the middle of the face and there's a spiker down low. Oh, yeah? Which is the fattest? The hind. Sweet, well, that's us. How far is the shot? Oh, 300. <laughs> right. Better get more vision in here, <laughs> Easy. It's walking from here, but pretty easy going, and we're soon at Chase's viewpoint from where he spotted our target. There's no immediate signs and the shot's a fair distance, so Joey decides we should head over to the next ridge, which will give us a wider view of the area and make my job a bit easier. But it's rough terrain to get there, so I'm glad I won't be the one carrying the kill back through. After all these hills, I'm starting to feel a bit poteho. Hopefully this ridge will be a good posse for us to set up base and have a lie down. He's just sitting in that patch of bush. He just walked in. Okay. You're going to go up to there and lie down. On there. That little patch there yeah. is sort of down. About. You could do, bro. Yep, you could do. Just trying to make my shots easier. shoulder and at least if the bullet drops a couple of inches we're still good. It was actually good to sit there on the hill there on the knob and um, try and wait patiently. Not that that's my strong point. How often did you come up here because used to a lot but um, now my son so caught the bug. Well, he shot his first deer when he was about uh, 12. Joe keeps saying that Chase does most of the shooting these days. Unless there's a uh, decent stag around, then I guess it's basically see who uh, gets to uh, shoot it. Chase. Bring your rifle down, Chase. Just to make sure I might get him to back you up, bro. Are oh, you just putting pressure on me, guys? <laughs> just like I put pressure on you, mate. Joe was talking it up. Guaranteed, he reckons. Then he gave me the gun and it wasn't guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting impatient, so Joey tries a special call. Whatever Joey's impersonating works, because there she is. But there's a fawn with her as well. Wait till she's side on, bro. There she is, bro. Reload, miss, bro. She's gonna come out through that clearing like she's running. She's just gone through, bro. Just um, pull your bolt up. You won't have to move. So I messed up my shot, and it looks like my backup chase missed too. We move a few metres to the right, where the rest of the hill is exposed, and she's likely to come out. And we spot her straight away. But it's just too far for me to take aim. I can't get her in my sights. Joey tells me not to shoot near the skyline. There are neighbours over there, who don't appreciate stray bullets. Fair enough, too. So that's the end of the stalking, but it's still great to take in the beauty of such a remote part of Aotearoa. It's a shame we won't have fresh venison for our hākari tonight, but I didn't want to be the one making an orphan out of that form. I'll keep that one to myself, though. Yeah, we saw a couple of deer, had a shot at one, and came in with nothing. <laughs> when it comes to stalking the deer, you 50%, I'd say. you just got to keep going back, keep going up. The more you go up, the higher your success rates there. That's the way hunting works, though. Yeah. Oh, boys. Seen some uh, deer, but uh, obviously the bank was no good with a shot. Mm. Neither was the insurance. Mm. <laughs> 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 well, at least we've seen some uh, some deer down there. Just wish the uh, deer were playing the game. And the shop. Right? And the shop. A little bit cock eyed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have been their early wake up, you know? <laughs> 
Finally, we're back to the case, to the Tokomaru Bay local. Te Puka Tevin, to prepare our evening meal. Kei reira taku ika kingi e tatariana. And Joey's brought us in some of his backup venison. Sweet case. What are we going to do? You're going to fill it, Tim. And that's us. We're going to make us some raw fish, bro. He told me I had to do it when he's actually supposed to do it. So what? Just this here? Yep. Straight down there and then down the backbone. Well, I hope this is sharp enough. It's sharp, bro. But it'll be fine. I've made uh, raw fish a lot. Learned off the old lady, so I'll make sure it's a good one. And just follow that backbone all the way down. That's the one. Now yeah, you've got it. Come back up again, bro. Start again. Stay on top of the bone, eh? Hey, don't go underneath it. He na te rahi o te kiko ke te nei ika. It's almost as big as the harpo guy I speared off the Chatham Islands. Like a professional, bro. Chuck that on there, bro. Oh shit! Oh, we're gonna get in trouble, guys. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> try not to stay on there, bro. Better clean that up. Stay there that way, bro. And you just get your knife. Just sit on top of that skin, right? And just wiggle that and just slide your knife forward at the same time. Yep. Pull it. Last couple of days has been awesome. Just looking forward to uh, the hakari. Colin better do a bloody good job, otherwise I'll be blaming him, even though he'll blame me. <laughs> well, flip it over and we'll see what, what you've done. Ah, oh, nah, no, sweet, bro. Sweet, just a little bit there. Oh, what we got here, boys? Bit of our venison, bro. Quick bit of olive oil. Oh, the old spray on. Saints on the coast here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit of uh, sea salt. And yeah, I just cook it whole like that with a bit of pepper. Pretty simple. And just throw it straight on this hot plate. About three or four minutes each side, and yeah, she's good to go, bro. Organic tennis. <laughs> <laughs> on the coast. One more bone to remove, and my first ever kingfish fillet is complete. Cut me. Oh, no, I just want to try to be tidy. Come oh, on, too late for that. Oh, okay. Just chuck that over here. It's already cut up now, bro, cut up into cubes. So we'll slide it over here. And he's somewhere prepared while I was waiting for you again. Just need to chuck some lemon in now, bro. That's going to marinate our fish a bit, cook it. Chuck those onions and those red capsicums in. And we just stir it up and just let it sit for about five minutes. The venison steaks are coming off medium rare, I hope, and need to rest for about 10 minutes before being sliced up and served. That should give us just enough time to add the coconut cream, salt, and pepper to our marinated kingfish. Pour that, that in, bro. Probably take both the kings. Oh, put it halfway. Eh? Nah, that's enough, I reckon, eh? Hopefully it tastes all right, too. Eh? And just salt and pepper, bro. What well, salt's that one? Just sea salt? Yeah, bro. He reckons if it's not nice. <laughs> we just pretend that it's nice. So until the camera's cut. <laughs> Have a taste, yeah, where you no, go? No, no, where you go? You made it. <laughs> oh, right. Good enough, right? Oh, well, raw fish all done, cuz. Yep. Vinny sorted. Vinny sorted. What else we got next? Potato salad. And bread. <laughs> That's us, bro. The last couple of days with Pity here, it's been awesome. He's a real down-to-earth guy, and he pretty much handled everything we, we threw at him. Yeah, no, he's awesome. All that's left to do is serve our kai, sit down and relax, and enjoy the rest of the evening with my new friends from Tokomaru Bay. Kaapoi. In this series, I've been all over the country, taking in the beautiful scenery and gathering kai. But it's the communities I've been welcomed into that I've cherished the most. Because all of this kai is meant to be shared. <laughs> you know, we, we can get a big bus in here. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Not bad, cuz. Oh, he's eating them. <laughs> get you wet now. It's good for the power of the white baiting. It brings people home. <laughs> Really, really good bunch of boys to be around. <laughs> It'll never end the banter, bro. It keeps us together, I reckon. Yeah, it's all about a rip too well. Thought I was a lumberjack, but clearly not. 
The first time I met him, I was into him straight away. Hey, ko mātou tēnei. Ka akātū ki ai o tēnei wahi a mātou. This is their family, this is their land. Ko tūpuna live through us. They feel safe here. There's something there for my kids and their kids to come back to. We're about providing a kai for our loved ones. And... To me, koe nā te tino āko tango o te Māori. That's kind of what we do. Nau mai ngā hua o rongo tāne o Tangaroa. He o rongo mo mātou tino āko. Te mātou e te tama me te wairu e tāku. Ake, ake, ake. Āmine. 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 Āmine.